How's it going everybody? This is Cameron White with White Light Astrology giving you guys your May 2019 horoscope for Pisces, Sun, and Rising. Thank you guys so much for being here and liking and sharing and commenting and subscribing. I love and appreciate every single one of you. Now, this month we're being faced with a lot of difficulty and challenges, but equally we have a lot of positive energy that's kind of being introduced this month. And I've been saying this in the last couple of horoscopes that I've done. Um, between the eclipses of January of earlier this year and July of, in the summer of this year, this is kind of like the turning point in the narrative, so this is definitely going to be an important month when you look back. Now, starting off the month, uh, at the end of April and into the beginning of May, on May 1st, we're going to have Saturn stationing retrograde. So Saturn's been direct now for the past few months, and when Saturn's direct, it gives us more obligations and challenges and walls and limitations to work with. And as Saturn stations retrograde, this is going to be the time where we face these challenges and these walls and take them on and basically have to put in the hard work in order to get through them. This is also has a lot to do with taking on more of a sense of responsibility and taking on more of like a role. Now, Saturn has been in your 11th house of friendships, of networks, of bigger groups of people. And this does have a little bit to do with your career stuff because the Midheaven does pour into the, t uh, into the 11th house as well. However, uh, for the 11th house, mostly just networks, bigger groups of friends, bigger groups of people, uh, phil philanthropic work, uh, humanitarian stuff. And with Saturn stationing retrograde right here, this is going to be a time of where, you know, we've talked about this the past couple months of Saturn in your 11th house. Friendships are, you know, a limiting thing. It's hard to reach out at this moment. Saturn stationing retrograde is what are you going to do about that? And that's going to be like that for the next couple of months. So definitely be paying attention to that. As we move forward into May 4th, we're going to be having the new moon in Taurus. And so, of course, a new moon is when you have the, both of the luminaries, the sun and the moon, in the same sign. And this is going to be a focus of resetting our energy and clearing out our energy, resetting intentions on whatever house that is. Now, the new moon in Taurus is about setting intentions of growth, setting intentions of stable and secure growth, abundant growth. And this is pretty positive, but this is happening in your third house, which is really, you want to look at that because the third house has to do with not only your speaking style and your writing style, but the third house also has to do with your neighbors, uh, people in close proximity, your siblings. So this new moon is going to be a really good opportunity to maybe clear the energy with some neighbors or with your siblings. Or this is also going to be a good time to really be clear about what you're expressing and how you're utilizing your energy. A couple days later on May 6th, we're also going to have Mercury enter Taurus, where Mercury, the planet of communication, of our logic, our intellect, our mentality, what we're thinking about, is also going to be in the sign of Taurus, where it's mostly focused on keeping growth, keeping the stability and the security and the abundance and the nice things that Taurus likes to bring. It's wanting to keep that alive. It's wanting to keep that growing and going good. So Mercury's going to be focused on those type of things. And while Mercury's in your third house of communication, this is going to be focused a lot on how are you expressing yourself and what message are you communicating, Pisces? But then two days after that, on May 8th, Mercury's actually going to conjoin Uranus. Now that Uranus is in your third house, this is bringing unexpected events, extreme ups and downs, liberation and breakthrough in that area for you of, again, your communication, how you utilize yourself. That's kind of like a third house topic in case I haven't talked about that yet. The first house is like who you are, the second house is what you have, and the third house is how you use it. So while Mercury conjoins Uranus right here, this is going to be a time of really looking at how can I creatively utilize myself through my communication, through my speech? What, not necessarily drastic changes do you have to make, but what can you kind of step up to the plate to and get out of your comfort zone that's going to help utilize yourself better? As we move forward into the middle of May, we're also going to have Venus enter Taurus as well. Venus is the planet of value and love and relationships and connection. She wants you to indulge in all the things that you enjoy. And as she enters Taurus, she's entering her home sign where she can basically do all of those things at the, at the best ability that she can. Now with Venus entering your third house, going into Taurus, into her home sign, and also on the next day on May 16th, conjoining Uranus, this is going to be a really big time of understanding the value in your communication and understanding the value of utilizing yourself. And as Venus conjoins Uranus, this is going to be a big time to look at how can you creatively get, not necessarily even get out of your comfort zone, but Uranus is kind of electrifying that energy of Venus where 
Venus and Taurus wants things to be nice and she wants nice things. She wants to be grounded and stable and fixated and going, yes, I want this. Yes, I want that. And as Venus conjoins Uranus, this is going to be a time of going, how, what do you want? How do you do that in a new and an innovative way? Then also on May 16th, we're going to have Mars enter Cancer. And Mars is going to be entering your fifth house of love, romance, children, sex, art, music, creativity. And this is important to look at because Mars is not only the planet of our energy, our action, our drive, our physical vitality. Mars is also, you know, dry and hot. It inflammates, it heats up, it cuts and it severs things. Mars is also in the it's sign of fall in Cancer, meaning Mars doesn't really operate properly and doesn't operate as good as it possibly can in this area. The sign of Cancer rules over things like intuition, our trust, what needs to be nurtured, what needs to be protected. And as Mars enters the sign of Cancer, this is going to be a time where Mars is only focused on what needs to be protected, what is a basic necessity that we need. And Mars is being in the fifth house of love and romance. So while Mars is going through there, you may have uh, some problems if you maybe if you have kids, you may find some irritations with your children, uh, with a romantic partner, or maybe you're just not feeling it. Mars, though, while it's in Cancer, is wanting you to focus on again what the necessities are and what needs to be protected in that area. Then moving on, uh, on May 21st, we're going to have the Sun enter Gemini. We're going to also have Mercury enter Gemini, and Mercury's going to go Kazemi. And this is a lot happening, and this is all happening in your fourth house. The fourth house is all about your family life, your private life, your parents, your living situation, your heritage. It's where you center yourself. Now, while the sun's going into Gemini, and the sun, of course, is the, the light, it brings, it shows us what we see, basically. You know, you can't go outside and not see anything unless the sun's out. Now, with the sun entering Gemini and entering your fourth house, this is when more of the topics and themes of the fourth house are going to be prevalent. However, with Mercury going in there, with Mercury being, you know, the communicator, the messenger, he's wanting to spread the message, get things straight, he's all about our mindset. As he goes into Gemini, he's going into his home sign where Mercury operates the best that it possibly can because it's its, it's, its own domain, it's its own terms. And Mercury is going to be Kazemi with the sun, meaning it's basically being purified by fire and being completely cleansed. So this is going to be a time where you look at your living situation, your home life, and you're going to get a lot of clarity and a lot of the light and a lot of the focus and the attention is going to be on your living situation and your home life and your family life. So this is going to be a nice dose of like refreshing communication. Then as we move forward into the end of May, uh, on May 30th, we're going to have Mercury oppose Jupiter, which I really think is going to be interesting. While Mercury is in its home sign of Gemini and Jupiter is in its home sign of Sagittarius, Jupiter is retrograde in your 10th house where, you know, you've had, you've made, you've created a lot of room for yourself to grow in your career and you have those, you have those possibilities. But while Jupiter is retrograding, this is more about, do you believe in those possibilities? Do you believe that this is where you want to go? And as Mercury is in Gemini in its home sign and it's getting, it's getting facts, it's getting the message clear from the home and the family life, this comes down to, you know, the reality of where you're centered at, where you're at right now versus what you want to grow into. And Mercury opposing Jupiter is basically giving you that message of here's a, not necessarily a dose of like Saturn reality where it's like you're going to die and like at some point. That's like Saturn reality. Mercury reality is like, yeah, well, you know, time flies by pretty fast and, you know, you're going to forget about this stuff anyway. So is this what you want to do? And if it is, do you want to be clear about it? So that is going to be really important as we get to the end of the month. Then on May 31st, the last day of May, we're going to have Venus trining Saturn. And I think this is really important too because as Saturn's retrograde in your 11th house and you're taking on more responsibilities and facing the challenges and obstacles that you have in your way in the area of your life that's all about your friends and your networks, Venus is in your third house in Taurus in the sign or in the house that rules communication. And while Venus is there trining Saturn, I think this is going to be a good time to really look at what you're expressing and you're communicating to the people that you surround yourself with. And if you want to spread more love and more positivity, how can you do that in a constructive way? And with that being said, that's what I got for you guys for May of 2019. So thank you guys again so much for being here and liking and sharing and commenting and subscribing. I love and appreciate every single one of you and I'll be seeing you next month.